This video is an introduction to data processing and the Mark Tags program. Topics we'll be covering will be the data file types, tag detection settings, and how they apply to manually marking methods, auto marking methods, and creating bookmarks. So in the HTI Acousti Tag system, each processing phase can be saved within a separate data file. So here we have the raw detection files that are collected and generated by the Cushy Tag program during data acquisition. After that, each phase of processing can be saved, for example, a tag detection file, a summary tag file, and a summary bookmark file. And depending on the scope of your project, you may use all of these or just one or two of them. Essentially, for data processing, what that really entails is assigning a tag ID to a raw signal. So we're here we have a couple screen captures of the Mark Tags program. The upper section shows uh, white symbols that represent each raw signal from a raw acoustic tag file. So here is an example of a RAT file where each entry would be a raw signal that was collected by the system, uh, represented by a white symbol at the top here. When we process the data, we're assigning the tag ID of that tag, which is essentially the period and subcode of that tag when it was programmed. So when we assign a tag ID to a series of signals, that gets stored into file and is visually displayed as a different color when you've assigned the tag ID. So this bottom example of a data file is a tag detection file that has all the information that's contained within the RAT file, but at the very end, it also has the ID of the tag. For example, here we marked this data and assigned it a tag 2052.09 as the ID that's been assigned to those series of signals. So let's start the program. Here we have marked tags. The very first thing you should always do is open up a project database, which is typically where the list of tags for the project that would be contained. Once you have the project database open, you're going to set up tag information to view the entire list of tags for this project. Typically, when you have a list of tags, for example, there's 135 tags this specific project that you don't necessarily have to look for all the tags at one time. There's always a subset of tags that you usually are marking and this is depending on the release number. For this example, all the tags that have been assigned for release number six have been turned on to be used for marking. And so once you have set your tag list, it updates the select period control here with all the tags um, that are currently selected for marking purposes. Next is the file options. Each file that the program processes, it can also have its create some of these data files automatically. So for marking the data and saving it, that's all going to be stored inside a tag detection file or a cat file. So let's have the program automatically create one of those when we open up a rat file. The other option we want to check first is the display options. You click on this main toolbar button that shows you the display options dialog box. And you want to have for marking, a uh, mark state option checked. This will visually display the symbols in a non marked state, and then a state for processing, and then finally, as you save the data, uh, you can visually display it as it manually marked or as it been an auto marked 
assignment. So we have here a mark state selected. So let's open up a data file. So we open up our hourly file. And so the symbols are displayed in white, which means that we have not been assigned any tag IDs. We'll first do an example of manually marking signals and assigning a tag ID. For manually marking, you typically do that on a per hydrophone basis. So this is a data file that has multiple hydrophone data within it. So you can scroll through and look at each data set from each hydrophone that was stored to file. Now for manually marking, you have to specify which tag you want to have set for manually marking the data. So your period histogram will help you find out what tags are within this file. So let's zoom in on this section where we have a strong indication that at this period position, we have a data for a tag that has, if you look at here, the period of close to 5847. So let's go on our tag list. And let's see if we can find one that's close to that period value. And here we have 547. And we have hydrophone 1. So this is a typical double pulse tag. We have the primary and secondary signal. We can do a query to verify that this is the proper subcode for this tag. And if you select the query double pulse and do a select the primary and secondary signals. It updates the subcode histogram in the lower right corner. So zooming in, we see that yes, indeed, those are tags that have a subcode 19 a separation. So this is the correct tag ID that will be used for assigning to these signals. So let's zoom out. To manually mark, you want to zoom in on the signal so you can get a clear view of what you'll be marking. So for manually marking, there, if you right click, there are a couple options. You can use a rectangle tool or a polygon tool. For a rectangle tool, you have to select both the primary and secondary signals. And what they'll do is turn yellow, which means that They've been selected for processing, but they have not been saved to file yet. And so this is where you can find out whether you marked it correctly or not. And if you messed up on your marking, you can always go to the main toolbar button and reset those signals. So let's do a little manually marking here. Even though we've got the entire primary and secondary signals, we're going to just do a stretch here, a part of it. So let's select this section. And once you manually mark it, then you can just go to the save process signals and save those signals to file. Now, if you notice, for manually marking using the rectangle tool, that if you have spurious noise in between your primary and secondary signals, it may assign those tag IDs, which you would not want. You're always striving to have the, the first signal coming from both the primary and secondary transmissions marked and remove any signals after that which are multipath. So in this example, it did not do a very good job of marking this section since we included this noise when we manually selected our signals. Another tool you can use is that instead of encircling everything, you would just encircle the first section, the primary, and then the secondary signal as well, and then save the file. So that would be correct, a much better marking than we did the first time. 
it's now we don't have these intermediate noise or signals uh, being marked in between the primary and secondary transmission. Another tool that you can use aside from the rectangle is the polygon tool. So let's zoom in on another stretch. And this allows you to have a more refined marking of the data. So where you can just select just the signals from the primary. And then let's do the secondary. And if we save that to file, you'll notice that we did not include the noisy signals in between the primary and secondary transmissions. But also, if we zoom in on a section here, whenever you're marking, whether it's manual or auto marking, there's a multi-path filter that's being applied so that even though that we had included these signals, it did not mark them because it's always detecting the first transmission for a series of signals and removing the multipath data, uh, even in the manual marking mode. So that's how you would mark it manually. Now, it'd be very tedious to go through each tag and each height of it to mark that data in that fashion. Typically, manually marking is used as an editing tool after you've auto-marked the data to clean up some of the data or, or to add additional signals to your marking results. Normally, what we do is auto-mark. And so to do that, we need to do a little description of the tag detection settings that are used in the auto marking procedure. So here is a screen capture of the tag detection dialog box that will be used for the auto marking uh, method. So here the first section is tag detection based on. You can have the program apply the auto marking criteria to the currently tag you've got displayed or the entire tag list. Next is the tag position. What the program does is as it's going through and auto marking the data, it first filters all the ambient noise or noise generated by other structures and tries to remove all that and just have the signals coming from that tag to be applied for auto mark. So you first define around the period histogram the range that you would accept data for that specific period from that tag. Next, the subquote histogram section for the settings is the same as a period histogram where you're defining the range around the subcode location for that tag for its subcode for accepting data that will be used for the auto marking procedure. After that, there is the detection settings where as the program is auto marking the data, it's selecting which symbols will be assigned a tag ID. The first criteria is the minimum singles. So as it's going along, and seeing a group of signals that it has to meet a minimum number. So for example, we have a minimum number of five. These would have been marked, but these three signals that together would not, since they would not meet our minimum signal criteria, and they would not be included. Next is the maximum gap. So as it's going along, if there's a gap in these signals, then if there's exceeds that gap, then uh, for example, these symbols or signals would not be assigned the tag ID since there's too much of a gap between the series that uh, it expects a group of signals. Then we have the maximum swim speed, which essentially calculates 
where the next signal is expected based on the velocity of uh, how fast that tag is traveling through the water. So this is an example of how we would not include the signal generated by noise that would be too far for the fish to be travel this far and then back again to be included for these group of signals. So once we have our criteria set, we can go back and look at all the data within the, all the data for the hydrophones. And so down in the period histogram, there is a button, View Tags to Auto Mark. If you select that and select the Auto Mark button, it will automatically go through and process the data for each tag in the list, applying the auto marking tag detection settings. And from that, it will show the results of going through the entire tag list. So here are the a summary of what tags failed the auto tracking procedure. So let's just save our results to file so we can look at the results. So once you save the file, you can go to the summary mark tags dialog box. And here is a summary of what tags were automatically detected and assigned tag IDs. So as you click on the list block entry, it will display that series of symbols for that tag. So you can do a review of how the program did in terms of auto marking. So let's look at this tag at 6659, Fevco to 19. Let's look at a specific hydrophone. We can zoom in. And we see here it did a pretty good job of selecting the first signal from each of the primary and secondary signals and assigning those tag IDs and not assigning the multipath data here. And you can go through and look at the results for all the tags. Now you notice that if we go up to tag 5847, we did mark some of these uh, signals manually. So what the program does is it skips over that and only auto marks the signals that were not assigned a tag ID. So you can include manually and uh, auto mark data within a file. Once you have your data marked, you can also then create bookmarks. The bookmarks are a handy tool for recording when a signal was first observed and last observed within a data file. So once you've auto-marked your data, both, both in a auto-marking and manual marking method, select the auto-mark bookmark tool and it will automatically create bookmarks for each tag for each hydrophone. Now the cover symbols show here that it will put down a bookmark when the tag was first detected, when it was last detected, the nearest proximity for the uh, hydrophone, and if you had a multiple hydrophone data file, which hydrophone did the tag was it most closest to? So if you see here for tag 5847, the hydrophone 2, this is the mark when it was first detected in the file and when it was last detected. And all this information can be saved to a bookmark file. This completes the introduction to data processing and mark tags.